Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT to generate insights for fantasy sports. Now you can use this for fantasy football, baseball, basketball, etc. But this is a fantasy hockey channel, so I'll be using this for fantasy hockey analysis. So we're going to be using ChatGPT. We're going to be using GPT-4 with plugins. So you do need to have the GPT Plus subscription in order to access those plugins. I'm sure there are other AI tools that will allow you to do similar things, but I like this interface and this format. So we're going to start with this today. Now, first you want to go to GPT-4 and you want to download the Notable plugin. So you go to the plugin store, type in Notable. I've already installed it. You click install, and this is just a, uh, a plugin that creates notebooks in Python, SQL, and Markdown to explore data, visualize data, and share notebooks with everyone. Once you install that, you go back to this dropdown and make sure that this is clicked on. That means that GPT-4 is going to use that for analysis purposes or for your prompting. The next thing we need to do is need to add data to Notable. So in order to do that, let's find some data. I like to use rotowire.com. You just go to rotowire, you'd go to fantasy sports, fantasy hockey, and then I click stats. This is the hockey slash stats. So this is where it brings you. And this is basically the NHL.com data, um, you know, games, goals, assists, points, all the usual stuff, nothing crazy here. But what it allows you to do is export this table to Excel or CSV. So you just click on that. I've already done this a couple times, so I already have the data. I'm not necessarily going to use this one. We'll use this one for the analysis. But once you download that, you have the file. I didn't do anything to it. You can look at it on Excel or you can just upload it to Notable. But the next thing we're going to need to do is go to Notable.io, which is right here. You're going to have to create a login for this. I've already done that, so we'll kind of skip this uh, for now. Now, Notable is free to use, free to sign up. I've already gone ahead and done that just for the, the speed of the video. Now, the next thing you do is you create a space. This is a space on this side, and this is just a place where you're going to work. So I have this set up. I just called it GPT Fantasy Stats. Once you have this space, then you need to create a project. So you just go to create. This is where you can create the space, but we're going to create the project. The project is called GPT Fantasy Stats Project. I've already gone ahead and done that. Once you create the project, this is like your project folder where everything's going to be generated. So you click on this. This is where you can upload data. I've already done that, but I'll just show you. You click upload. You go upload from computer. We'll click on that. I'm not going to upload it again. And then you just click hide to remove that. And the data should exist in your GPT fantasy stats uh, project folder. So the next thing you do, once you have this data loaded into your project folder, you need to copy the URL, then we'll go to ChatGPT. And this is how easy it is. So you just say, using this URL as my project directory. Okay, I'm just saying, conduct exploratory data analysis from the perspective of generating insights for fantasy hockey. I could have stopped there and it would do uh, its own analysis work, but I kind of want to hone in on some specific things for fantasy hockey. Specifically, I want to find the top five players in each position for goals, assists, shots, and points. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So first thing ChatGPT is going to do is it's going to try to connect to Notable's uh, directory where you loaded all of your data. So it's going to identify the data files in your project. Let's check the files in your project directory. I found the file that you uploaded. I assume this is the file we'll be working with. Let's start by creating a new notebook where we can conduct the exploratory data analysis. If you're not familiar with data analysis or Python, a notebook is just a place where you can generate code and you can read it uh, kind of effectively and quickly. And you'll notice that it created this notebook right here. You can click on that to follow along if you want to know what the code is doing. But we'll go back to ChatGPT and it's just saying, now let's load the data from the Excel file into your notebook. We'll use Pandas, which is a powerful data manipulation library in Python to load and analyze the data. Uh, and if it's not installed, it will install it for us. So it's already figured out, okay, this is the file we have. What packages do I need to install? Let's install those packages and let's start with the process. The data has been successfully loaded into the notebook. Here's a preview of the first few rows. This is just to show you what the data is that you're working with, just to double check that it's the correct data and this is what you want to use for the analysis purposes. You can probably skip this step by prompting it to not do this if you want to keep it uh, a little bit more fast. 
Obviously, GPT 3.5 is faster than GPT 4, so it can get bogged down a little bit, um, but it is helpful just to make sure that you're working with the correct data. So here it's saying, it seems like the column names are in the first row of data. Let's fix that by reloading the data and setting the first row as the header. So it's already doing data transformation. And this is something that I do to this data on a regular basis. I take that top row, there's another row on top of that that's just a header. Uh, and I try to manipulate that uh, to make it a little bit more digestible for uploading it to various data visualization software. So it's already doing this for us. It identified that that's what was going on and it's doing it automatically. The data has been reloaded with the correct headers. Here's the updated preview. Again, we don't really need this updated preview, so this is kind of redundant, uh, but it is interesting to note that it's thinking through this process the way that you would as an analyst. Now let's proceed with the analysis. We'll start by finding the top five players in each position for goals, assists, shots, and points. So this is helpful if you're playing fantasy. Um, one thing that I would do personally for this specific data is I would first tell it to calculate uh, per game averages to try to filter out some players have uh, lower totals overall because they missed 15 or 20 games during the season. So in order to find the most prolific players, you would want per game averages, but this is just looking at the higher level data. So it's saying centers. Now this is using Rotowire's uh, positional uh, you know, categorization. So Carter Verhage is a left winger in Yahoo, but nonetheless, it does a really good job at coming up with the top five centers for goals. Um, this is the top five centers for assists, McDavid, Dreisaitl, McKinnon, Pedersen, Crosby. Shots, it's coming up at the top five, and points. Right wingers, and it's doing the same thing for each position. So it's already iterating through each position, which is a, a column within the data set, and it's finding the top five for each position, uh, for each category that we specified. So this is a very powerful tool that you can use to find players uh, for specific purposes. So these are guys that are going to get you shot volume in fantasy hockey if shots is one of your categories or if you have point weighting for shots, this will help you out. Guys like Zach Hyman are not necessarily drafted that high, but to know that he has 276 shots last season, that is helpful because he could be a value player next year where you can find him later in the draft and just use him for shots. Here's the top point scoring right wingers, Pasternak, Kucherov, Rantanen, Marner, Tage Thompson. And it continues for left wingers and then defensemen. So it's already done a really good job of uh, basically doing what we asked it to. It would have done some of this on its own, but just to hone in on specific thoughts and insights that you want for fantasy purposes, it did a really great job. Okay, next, let's do just that. Calculate per game averages for each of those categories and then conduct the same analysis. Add in some graphs. That's all we'll say. Now, if you want to follow along with what's going on, because this is going to take a minute, you can go back to this notebook and see exactly what's happening. So if you know anything about data analysis or Python, you can follow along. It's installing pandas uh, as the library that you're going to use for analysis reads in the file and gives you that uh, the top five the uh, data dot head gives you the top five so that's what it comes up with here then it conducts the analysis uh, further down so the metrics that we're going to use the position data that we need and then it creates a for loop to make sure that it's finding all of the information that we want then it's generating the output here and now underneath that uh, it's installed matplotlib, which is a different library used for visualization, and it's conducting what we wanted it to do. And let's go back here and see the graphs that it's generated. So per game averages for each category have been calculated, and the top five players in each position have been identified. Here are the results with corresponding graphs. Goals per game, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Point, Hughes, and Verhage. And then it shows the goals per game uh, close to one. Uh, this is... a uh, I think a typo or a misprint here, Kyle, Chris Gulo or whoever, um, that should be Carter Verhage instead of these guys. But uh, that's a, a showing you an error in the data. It sometimes recognizes those errors and suggests correcting them. Um, but we just noticed that this is something that you do have to do is just make sure that the data is correct. So right here, it's showing the five names, but for whatever reason, it's changed the name here. As we go down, assist per game, you're getting another one of these couple names here are off. 
So it's not 100% accurate, but it is pretty remarkable that uh, it's done exactly what we told it to do uh, and generated some graphs. You can update these graphs with some additional prompting saying make the graphs interactive or make the graphs a different color, add labels, whatever you want to do, you can add another prompt on top of that and it'll regenerate these graphs uh, or we could say re regenerate these graphs to fix these names that are incorrect. So it's not 100% perfect, but it does give you insights nonetheless, insights that you can then use. So here's shots per game. Now we saw the overall shot numbers, but the per game averages are a little bit more helpful because that gives you an insight as to what they're gonna do on a daily or weekly basis for your team. Uh, and it does account for injuries. So you know when it does that, you're getting Brady Kachuk, who's almost five shots per game. Timo Meyer is at uh, a little bit over four. Same thing with Brady Kachuk. Uh, this is, again, another naming error, Lucas Condata. He's not a prolific player. So it just messed up the names down here in the uh, label of the graph. But you do get the correct names here. So there must have been something in terms of the labeling uh, as part of the code. And we can go back and try to fix that if you want to get uh, a little bit more granular with it. Now, let's say we wanted to hone in on just shots per game and find some of the top players for shots per game. Let's do a little bit more prompting. Generate a scatter plot showing the top 20 players in terms of shots per game. Make the graph interactive. So this is another prompt that you can do, just making graphs interactive. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to uh, interact with the graph a little bit differently. It's not going to show the graph here. You're going to have to go to the notebook to find that interactive graph, but it's worth it because once you can do that, uh, sometimes if you, if you generated a graph like this normally, maybe the player, uh, the name labels would be a little bit, you know, on top of each other overlapped and it would be difficult to read. Uh, you can kind of you know edit that out by making the graph interactive and it shows you the link for the interactive scatter plot. So you can go right there and this will show you the notebook that we have in here. It's the exact same thing. But and you scroll all the way down to the bottom underneath all these other graphs that we generated. And here's the interactive graph. So uh, again, there's some of these names are not correct, which we will have to uh, address going forward. But just to give you a, a base level of understanding, it does a pretty good job. It doesn't have the labels, which is good because it would get a little bit hard to read. And it also colorized them by position, which is also really helpful. I didn't ask it to do that. It just did that on its own, showing that these are the different positions and how the top players in each position fared. So McKinnon, 5.15 shots per game, Matthews, 4.41, etc. And then you can go by position. This is not Lucas Condata. I probably would guess that that's Brady Kachuk. Um, that has Brady Kachuk there. Um, so there is an error here that we do have to figure out. But uh, just on the base level, just showing you how to get your data, where to import it into Notable, and then using ChatGPT to generate regular graphs, some tables earlier, and now an interactive scatter plot. This can do a lot for you in terms of your fantasy performance. If you, uh, let's say, have a player that goes down with injury and you need to replace that player, you can, uh, let's, let's do that. Which pl uh, player is the most similar to, let's say, John Carlson? He was out for a huge chunk he was out for a huge chunk of the season um, with injury. He got a slap shot to the head and it did some damage. He was out for a couple of months. And if that happened to you mid-season, you would need to replace that player. So you can use this data and then just prompt ChatGPT to find the player who is most similar to John Carlson in terms of their per game averages. Now, I'm interested to see how it will think through this. Uh, if it's going to use a machine learning algorithm or if it's just going to guess or if it's going to conduct some analysis uh, on its own and find, uh, yes, yeah, let's see here. The player most similar to John Carlson in terms of their per game averages is Brent Burns. Here are the per game stats. That's really interesting. Now, obviously, you would have to do this a couple of times to find players who are available on your waiver wire, but this gives you a sense of how you can replace players, and it's a very powerful tool for a number of different uses. I've shown you three different use cases here, but you can you know get creative with it and do your own analysis if that's what you want to do. But that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.